uh, speak about major disparities in public access defibrillation programs implementation of French nationwide study. Nicole. Thank you, Professor. Um, it's a pleasure to be here today to talk about this interesting topic about the dispar disparities, regional disparities in public access defibrillation programs. I have nothing to declare. So the idea behind the study was that we all know that sudden cardiac death re continues to be a huge burden for the society with more than 300,000 deaths per year in the United States. Despite all the investments in research, we still have survival rates that are lower than 10%. And we know that the first few minutes after sudden cardiac death occurrence or sudden cardiac arrest are very important for the, to, if we want to try to save the patients. And therefore, starting mid-90s, the concept of public access defibrillation has developed. And the idea be behind these programs is, is, is it's, these are two armed programs. So there's a sp the part that's advising to deploy automated external defibrillators, AEDs, outside in the public and a second part that is trying to advise the uh, that's trying to advise the local authorities and the governments to provide education to the population for to understand how to do CPR and to use AEDs so first studies were done there, there were randomized studies and we know that these programs are useful but the way they are deployed in the re in the real world and if they work or not and how do they work is not really known so we decided to <coughs> do this study in order to assess in 51 districts in France, which, cov which covers a population of 30 million, uh, around 30 million inhabitants. So we wanted to see how these programs are being applied. Are both arms being ap applied simultaneously or not? Are they, are they re really being applied and are they working? And in case they are working, which part, which arm of the, 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 to the program is working better? But, so therefore we conducted the, this study so 51 districts and what we could see that it w there was a huge discrepancy so we are, we are in the same country but we can see that the number and the density of f first of educated individual is really variable so we, it can go from less than 7000 to more than 36000 inhabitants <coughs> per so, so 100000 inhabitants and then the density of AEDs it can go f all the way from 5 to more than 3,000 per 100,000 inhabitants per 1,000 square kilometers. So it's a huge dis discrepancy. There's absolutely no homogeneity in the deployment of the program. Another thing that we could notice is that the two arms of the programs were not deployed in the same way. Third of the, pro of the district invested well, relatively well in the two arms. Another third didn't invest in any. And another th a third third invested either in one of uh, in one of the two, two arms and the results on the survival as you can as we can see in this graph is that the survival rate is really variable according to uh, according to the degree of investment so as long as the density of so if you go to the first uh, group where we have a low density of uh, AEG deployment we can see that the survival rate is only around 4.7% when we when the, in the department who had a bit more the defibrillators, then the survival rate go went up to 5.9 percent. But what really made the difference is when people were educated to basic life support and to AED use. And there we can see that the survival rate increased to 17 percent in departments that didn't deploy enough AEDs, and in, de and in departments that deployed many AEDs and then the survival rate reached up to a median of 22.5 percent but actually in some departments it's reached up to 45 percent so what we can see that the real work of these uh, programs is when the two arms are really deployed in the same time and when, when they are combined so according to the study we can see that major heterogeneity exists in PID programs that the two arms are not deployed simultaneously that these programs work, but education is the corner stores of these programs. So just deploying AEDs without educating the population will not solve the issue of sudden cardiac arrest. And if you want to get to increase survival rate, then we will have to combine the two strategies. And this is important to take into account in future public health policy pl policies planning. Thank you. Thank you. Professor Hoover, some comments? 
no special comment at the moment. So, so I would be interested what is really done now based on this data. So is anything changed with the health politics? So will it be changed? It hasn't been published yet, so so far there has been no influence. We hope that somebody will listen and that it will change something. So far it's not the case. Uh, I have a, a, a question, again trying to clarify it. You, you know one of the big issues now, discussions, is whether uh, public access defibrillators should be implemented together with basic life support education. That's a little bit what you are discussing here. There are two tendencies, one which says you should educate the population on the use of defibrillator, period. Mm -hmm. And there are some examples of that in many cities across Europe now, and the results they have are quite uh, interesting. And there are others that say, no, you have to educate the population in uh, uh, implementing basic life support, in, in doing a, a massage, etc., etc. Now, the point here is when you say that the, one of the things I can imagine is that you have a higher survival rate where the population is more educated, not because they are implementing basic life support, but because they are educated, they are not afraid of using the defibrillator. And, and this is something we should try to clarify because it's very important. Of course, that we have to educate the population, I think, is clear to everybody. If you put a device here, you don't say what the device is for, nobody will use it. Yes. If you have a device here mm -hmm. and you say the people, this is to defibrillate the people and this is how we defibrillate, some people might use it. If you do that and you say the people and you can do massage and you can do this and you can do that, it, you are making more yes. aware of the population. Another question is, do we have to educate the people in the use of ICD, which is very simple, this is a three minutes video, or do we have to educate the population in basic life support, which are much more complex situations, you have to spend several hours on that and make things a little bit more complex. And that's why I would like that you what, clarify that. What we tested in this study is, is the complete education programs. We had, the, we, we, we analyzed in each district the governmental uh, education programs, so the programs that, that, that are uh, two or three days long and, who, and uh, that really explain everything about CPR, about sudden, uh, about sudden cardiac arrest, about AED use, and the shorter programs who are still one-day programs, but all these programs were not only dedicated to AED use. The, all these are prog were programs that were dedicated to CPR, to understanding sudden cardiac arrest, to informing the population about the need to call quickly. Because if, the, if we just explain to people that they need to use the AED, and if they leave the victim uh, behind and go bring the AED without any massage, then the AED, we know that it's not going to help because one, the patient won't be in a shockable rhythm. So what we really need is to educate the patient to perform CPR before telling him to go bring the AED because otherwise he won't save lives. My, so. my question is simple, and I'm sure you have this data, and you can, maybe not now, but you can analyze it, I'm sure. Yes. In the population with a high level of AID implementation. You have a lot of defibrillators in the street. Mm. Are the use of defibrillators the same or not? Independently of CPR, are the defibrillators used in the same amount, because you have the same amount of defibrillators, but much less people that is trained. So are the defibrillators used in the same amount, or in the trained population, the defibrillators are used in much more often because they are trained and they are not uh, a threat of using it? This is the question. Um, actually, we are still getting the data about the rate of AED use. We don't have the, the feeling that the, the rate of AED use was this high in this population. So uh, we are still acquiring the data, so I don't okay. want to give uh, wrong answers for the moment. Thank you. Yes. Questions? So do you think that, do you think that I, I assume yes, because of your conclusions that we, but still I have this problem, eh? Do we have to train the people or do we have to inform the people how to use the defibrillator? What we tested, what we saw was the training. It wasn't right. just an education. It was a training. It was both educational sessions with training and with hands-on has uh, hands-on training okay. uh, sessions. So that's all I can talk about. Yeah, professor. Yeah, do we have the... Okay. I think one, one very complex and important question is, 
if more patients survive, what is the neurological outcome of these yeah. patients? So would, would a better training with respect to, li uh, to life support uh, also improve the neuro neurological outcome? So surviving is not everything. Yes, what we, what we saw in the study is that uh, the rate of uh, survival with good neurological outcome was relatively high. So we can say that most of pa patients who survived, they had a good neurologic outcome. So uh, it's not only survival, it's also a good uh, lifestyle. Please. Bonjour. Uh, mm -hmm. Jean-Bac Robin de Samuel Paris. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the fact that 60% of 70% of the home? Yes, and this is. And also, point, what is it about the geolocalization? The, 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 the geolocalization of the AEDs, of where do we sub, are we suppo supposed to implant, to put the AEDs? That's the question. We know now about 100,000 zero conference. Nobody know exactly the place. Yes, definitely. And uh, the problem is that the regulator, the SAMU, does nothing. Um, I, we all know that the problem with AEDs is that in more than half of per, half, half of cases, people do not have access to the AEDs. So it's true that the geolocalization is a real problem. And in uh, the research team where I've been working, Xavier Jouvent's team, we have worked on this topic with the Samut Paris. So we try to see where the AEDs are supposed to be put if we want people to 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 use them. Previous studies have shown that. Putting, uh, putting uh, AEDs inside the buildings uh, might not be a good solution because obviously to, in order to get the, to the AED, it's people, it takes too much time and it's, it hasn't been shown to be effic uh, efficient, but there are some teams still working on that to try to see if we can get something out of it. The summit, uh, in, in France, we have an application that allows to, uh, to locate the nearest AED and locate some kind of uh, people who are, tr who are willing to come and uh, perform CPR if we, need, uh, if we need to. So it's again an application in France, but it's not available everywhere. So. And the summit at Paris is, is giving some advice about where to find the nearest AED. One so. place. Yes. <laughs> in fact, in fact you, are, you are asking a question which is not yet solved. There is a lot of discrepancies on whether the, the EID should be fixed or should be mobile, whether yeah. they should be in, a, in a, a fixed positions. We are, for instance, in Barcelona implementing uh, every single pharmacy will have an EID just to make sure that everybody knows pharmacy EID. So it's complex to know and it's, uh, there are a lot of applications yeah. trying to localize the EIDs uh, yeah. uh, because you might have a sudden death here, have an IED 15 meters, and you don't know that is there. So this is the, the things that are still not, not, not solved, and also whether the general population should be trained on basic life support, or we should train them just in the use of, of EID. So there is a lot of controversies on that, so I think that the, the, your, your work Helps we have another paper going, going on to see where, do, where are we supposed to be put the AEDs. Exactly, if it, it's supposed to be pharmacies, if it's supposed to be train stations, right. if it's supposed, but it's not, it's an unsolved issue so far. Thank and you. what is it about uh, the education in the, in the school? It's a very good Absolutely. idea, and uh, there's an initiative so, uh, from uh, DSC uh, right now for kids to save lives. And we know that a kid, uh, when a kid is 13 years old, he's, av he's able to do CPR just like an adult. So we definitely need to start tra training people early. If we want uh, a cardiac arrest that occurs at home to be saved, then we need to address these extreme ages. I mean, the kids and also the elderly, because most of the trainings happen at, uh, at work or at, uh, sc at school or college, but the elderly don't get this information. So again, we need to address extreme ages. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we'll move